everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Let's get and make some beautiful floral bath bombs. We're going to make these ones a beautiful pink and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a beautiful soluble dye and then we're also going to add just a spoon of mica. Now the reason we're adding mica is sometimes water soluble dyes will lose their color in the sun. So if you're working at a market or something like that, it makes it really tricky, doesn't it? But like I said, today let's get into a video all about, uh, you know, making these absolutely beautiful bath bombs. So today I'm going to use a really, really lovely um, new fragrance, which is out from Pure Candle Supplies. And it's just a floral one called uh, Flower Shop. And it's really, really pretty. So like I said, without further ado, let's get into this gorgeous video. So inside here I have a, some small amount of water. This is just some distilled water in here. We've just got a tablespoon. So that's all you need for this. And now in here, this is the water soluble dyes if you haven't seen them. They're just a really, really light powder and you need the smallest bit. So don't add in a tablespoon or anything that is way too much. It will um, just go everywhere. So they give you these tiny spoons. If you can see how little that is compared to that, it's really, really little. It's probably like quarter of a teaspoon and this is probably all you need for a one kilo mix we don't need a massive mix and then once we start to mix it in well look how beautiful this color is going to go it does i've spilt it everywhere but it does go really really gorgeous so look how nice um that one is in there so these are the beautiful colors that it's going to go and then of course we are going to be adding this into um, our bicarbonate soda so we've done this bit here let me clean up my mess because I'm so messy today and um, we'll put this one away and then we will go on to the next step. So to start with we're going to do a thing that is called blooming your bath bomb and what that actually means is we need all the bicarbonate soda and then we actually need to add in the water soluble dyes and keep mixing that around and what happens is that disperses all the color onto the um, bicarb. You can do this in advance and literally leave it. It won't go hard because you're going to keep aerating uh, all the bicarb. So it's not going to dry out and get hard like you would if you put lots and lots of water. And that's why you definitely can't put more than one tablespoon um, of water in this mix. So here I just have my normal sifter and then this steel bowl here is the one that's going to go onto my mixer here. This is just a cheap mixer from a department store. So we're going to start with some bicarbonate soda so i have 1.05 kilos which is 1050 grams so we'll work in grams today but i thought look today i'll give everybody the recipe on youtube and on patreon so i've already measured it up and it's in here so let's just put it through the sifter and the reason we're sifting it is so that you're getting a really smooth bath bomb. If you don't do this, you might get lumps and bumps and things like that on your bath bomb. So just make sure you uh, do all that. And I'm going to do this and then I'm going to put different gloves on because my other gloves, as you all seen before, I got them super duper messy. So let me just grab some gloves. I will just put some more gloves on because as you all know um, from the first little bit of this video I got it everywhere. Now if you get water soluble dye on your hands, the bench, it goes everywhere. It's so hard to even get one little drip of it. Just goes on everything and you really need to change the gloves because if you don't honestly it's just going to make a big big mess. Now in my recipe I do have SLSA which um, you know a lot of people know about that it's a very airborne product now if you don't want to use SLSA you can just leave it out you really don't need uh, to pop that in there but we're not going to do that yet this part like I said is all about the blooming and all about just getting this right so you can see that I've got everything in there which is just my bicarb now let's just add this that we already did before so remember we did this one before we're literally just going to pour it in and then what I do is just pop it in here and if you go around in circles it will just get every last little bit out because the bicarb will absorb any colour that's left in this little jar. And you'll see lots of people doing this, it's very common. And this way you'll know that every time um, you will get exactly the same colour mixture if you're doing these for shops or wholesale because they definitely will want the colour the same. 
so it's in there let's just go and pop it on here now remember when you're popping it on here if you can see this this is actually called a paddle so you need to use the paddle not the whip um, the whip will just not do the right thing paddle is literally just going to swoosh through it all and just slowly put that color now you will need to turn this on for about five to six minutes just to let it continuously do it and then I come back stir it and keep going so let's just pop this one on And you'll see that the colour is going to uh, very, very slowly change. And like I said, over time what we're going to do is just get the spoon in, turn it round and keep going until you get the colour that you want. So I'll bring you back when this bit is all done. Now I had to just show you, look how beautiful this colour is here. It looks so nice. So this is actually the pink and we'll get nice and close and you'll be able to see it will blur out too much though. But isn't it beautiful? So now all I'm going to do is add one tablespoon of mica. You can add less, you can add half a tablespoon, depends on the colour you actually want. And then we're going to turn this back on. So then the mica will be mixing in with this and then we'll be on to getting all of the other ingredients in. Now a little bit uh, of something else to tell you, if you have citric acid that is really, um, you know, chunky looking, just pop it through, um, you know, a sifter and you can also grind it down to make it powder uh, thin. So mine, I'm going to pop mine through a grinder to make this one super, super uh, smooth for this bath bomb. Now before I get on to the next thing, I thought you might want to see, so this is what I actually use to grind up my citric acid. Usually I get mine from a place called N Essentials, but unfortunately the prices are so expensive I've had to go elsewhere to get them um, and it's not their fault it's just a supply and demand at the moment around the world uh, citric acid is very very expensive so anyway this is what you use this actually came with my brawn uh, stick blender it was just an attachment and I'll show you how you do it so basically this is the blade that's going to cut it it just sits on the little knob that's inside there and now what we're going to do is we'll just put some citric acid in so I'm just going to show you this so we're just going to pour it straight in there and I know this cup is a little bit small but that's okay at least it gets it in and it doesn't go everywhere that's why I'm using it but this is just to show everybody so we will just pour it around the stick making sure it doesn't get on the top because this is where the attachment's going to go so now we've got it all in here and honestly you could probably use this the way it is but to me it's just a bit grainy and I know it's not going to be perfect um, so that's why I just wanted to fix it. Now we're just going to put the top on because this is what comes with this and then your stick blender just goes in here and it basically just clicks in so can you see how it's clicked in now I will turn it on and um, I will actually beep out the little bit of noise because it'll be very noisy and then we can remove it and see it's like fine dust so it's definitely perfect isn't it so that's how I measure up all of mine and fix all my citric acid that's too um, heavy. Now once I do that, I definitely put it back through my sifter here just to make sure it's getting all of the big chunky bits out. And um, this is what I talk about everybody. You know, when you're buying materials, sometimes the cheapest material is not the best material. Uh, you know, like with my citric acid that I usually buy, it's $220 a bag, like really expensive. But usually it's like $130 or something like that a bag. So it's not as bad. It's always more expensive, but it's definitely really fine. And it's an amazing product to use. But um, like I said, it's, it, you know, sometimes when the materials are so expensive, you just can't make any money. So you've got to be realistic as well. Now by doing that you can see these bits here um, are not really fine. So these ones I'll actually just put through my 
uh, machine again just to break them down and make sure that they're perfect. I know it seems like a lot of work but if you're selling your product it really does need to be an A grade product. So now that we've done all that bit, we are going to be on to the next bit. So I've got my sifter on top and now we're going to be adding in some kaolin clay. So I'm going to be adding in one tablespoon of kaolin clay into the mix. You can add a little bit less if you like, but kaolin clay will actually also help it to harden. This on its own is not enough to harden the bath bomb. And then I use this here, which is cream of tartar. You can buy this in a big bag, but I've actually ran out. That's why... Um, I'm using it like this. So you want two um, heaped teaspoons of cream of tartar, and this will keep your bath bomb nice and hard. If you don't need it, if you don't use enough, your bath bomb will turn powdery, and it will be soft in about a month. So this way, with this cream of tartar, these should be fine for about ten months. Um, I have some bath bombs that you know, um, like that my kids have just put on the shelf in our bathroom and they've been there for 11, 10, you know, maybe 11, even 12 months um, and they're fine. They're still rock hard. So that's really why, you know, we do all of this. But as I said, so in here, we've got all of this, haven't we? Um, as I said, so now we're going to set this one aside in a moment. If you want your SLSA, this is when you would add just a pinch of SLSA or half a teaspoon. I really don't use much at all of SLSA and the reason I don't use a lot of it is there's just no need to use it and you don't want to be heavy handed on the SLSA um, as well but the good thing with SLSA what it actually does is it slows down the spinning of your bath bomb making your bath bomb actually last longer so that is the reason why you actually pop it in there and you'll see lots of people of course it does the bubbles and everything else but it also just makes the spinning last a bit longer so that is the reason behind actually popping in the SLSA but like I said we're going to pop this aside because we don't want our citric acid in yet and then we're going to do all of our liquid oils into um, the pink bath bomb mixture that we've already done so let's organize that and like I said we'll be on to the next step of adding all of those in so now let's add in the liquid portion. So in here, I do have one tablespoon of my fragrance oil. Please check your fragrance oil to see which one you can actually pop in. You can just pour it in here because we're going to mix this back with the mixer as well. So now I have this beautiful jojoba oil. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of that in there. And if you don't want to use that, you can just use a carrier oil. So you can use sweet almond, apricot kernel oil. Um, I wouldn't use coconut. It's a little bit heavy and it actually stops your bath bomb spinning as well. And now we've got our sweet almond oil. So we want one and a half tablespoons of sweet almond. So we'll just pop that in there. And as you can see, I'm just literally pouring all of it into here as well. And last but not least, we definitely need some polysorbate 80. This will stop the mica sticking to the bath. And I always put it in because it does add us a bit of a binder. But this is a total personal choice. Um, so let's just get all of that out of there. Now, so now here we go. Everything is in here. We will just go and pop this back on the mixer. And then we will be adding in all of the other ingredients, which is the dry ingredients. We will mix that again. So to make your bath bombs smooth, and people always say to me, how do your bath bombs get so smooth? Honestly, it's mixing, mixing, mixing. That, that is the only thing I can tell you, honestly, to make them perfect is just keep mixing. So now you'll be able to see in here, look how gorgeous this pink is. I've mixed in all the oils. So now I'm just going to be adding in the rest of it, which of course is our citric acid and everything else. Before you add the citric acid in, I'd suggest in here, spray about three to four sprays of witch hazel, not too much. And that way that will be the wet ingredient. And if we need to add more later, we can, but we'll do that now. And then we will go and add all of our, our dry ingredients. Now let's add in all the dry ingredients because remember we have sifted everything so we're just going to pour it straight in there and then let's turn it on again and let's see it make its magic. So here 
here is my massive big bowl this is just my local department store like three dollars and what I actually like to do is pop it all in here because it's much much harder to mix in this very tall container so let's just pop it in you'll always notice some bits not mixed in and that's fine because we're going to mix that by hand so we will just scrape everything out and I'm sure you can see how beautiful that color is and remember like I said we haven't added that much color this is a really really small amount it's probably less less than a quarter of a teaspoon um, like I said of you know the water soluble dyes that we added in with the water and if you can see how beautiful this looks now if I didn't grind this citric acid it definitely would not be this gorgeous kind of consistency as well it would be you know really hard and that's definitely not what we want and you can see by doing all that there is no white lumps in here like everything is colored everything is really good and then I always do this I always honestly go over everything mix everything in just to make sure that this is perfect now if you have a dehumidifier I decide I definitely suggest you put it on but you know look we're in Melbourne um, everybody and we're in our winter at the moment so we've just gone into winter this week and we'll definitely have rainy days so when it's a sunny day or it's you know the humidity is good that's when I go look let's just make heaps of bath bombs so today I'll probably make about 200 bath bombs because it's a really nice day and sometimes you have to do that you might have to change your schedule around now let me show you if I hold it in my hand you can see how gorgeous that is it's holding so that is absolutely perfect so now let me show you how I do mine so I use these now this is a round one this is called the express bath bomb um, and basically it comes with two pieces so number one and number two so this is like a three piece set because you've got this which is the shaft you just drop the top one in and then this is where we're going to put all of our bath bomb mixture and then this will go on top to press it in and then I use a hand press so I'm going to show you how I do all of mine and in between I go over to the scale which is just to the right of me and I measure every single one because I sell wholesale so it's really important that they are getting what they say now remember if we measure this up to be 150 grams with the water um, the water will start to evaporate in it so then that might go down to like 144 grams so you really need to add about five extra so I always add a few grams extra just to calculate for that later on because in Australia it has to be pretty spot on so now on my scale I'm going to pop this on tear it out so then that means anything that goes in it is just the measurement rather than weighing up this whole piece so because that particular um, mold on its own is 167 grams so we don't want to have to try and figure that out and now I just use this side here fill it up and as I said we want this to be um, around 150 grams because that's how I sell mine so this says 154 which is perfect uh, 154 155 is pretty good because we want um, you know like I said you know to have a few extra grams for when everything um, evaporates now this is my little trusty machine this is what's called a handheld uh, bath bomb presser so it's also from the express company in the US which I got it shipped out to Australia I think it was about three hundred dollars in you know that's with the shipping and the machine the machine on its own is about 160 um, and you can go through bath bomb world I think it's called bath bomb world um, after pay now but I didn't pay on after pay I just think that's their name and that's it and then I actually got this little uh, thing as well that was given to me from them when I bought it and you just press that to press it out let's just wipe off the excess and this little line here is going to become my beautiful satin ring so now all I'm going to do is hit it with some scissors around the edge when I do mine I literally just tap around the edge I never tap on the top because that can actually crush the top um, and you don't need to do much at all and you'll get into a rhythm and you'll get really fast I'm just slow because I'm showing you on here but usually I would have this done in like eight minutes so look how beautiful they are can you see how like absolutely perfect that is and um, that's what happens when you grind down all of your products now lucky for me I'm going to show you my bath bomb holder which is super good 
Now, this is my bath bum holder and you know it's not actually a bath bum holder when i went to the department store they had tennis balls in here and i said hey could i actually have that spare one they said take them they had a couple there and i went back to get more and they didn't have any i was devastated but if ever you can get something like these these are perfect and the stores just throw them away um so yeah so to me that was like that is amazing you know like um i thought that was really really good i was so excited to get it and now from this bit all we're going to do i'll just show you what i do i'm literally just going to turn it upside down give it a little squeeze with your hand you can see how i'm just squeezing gently pull it out and look how perfect that bath bomb is so i hope this tutorial has been really easy i will definitely pop down um, the recipe down below for everybody to be able to use and i hope that you'll make some of these over the weekend and now that i have my new microphone attached to my phone i will be able to bring out more videos because that's why i hadn't bought out so many because i needed to save up even though it was only 70 dollars for this microphone i just really didn't have that so I needed to save up to buy it and um, luckily for me my daughter did help me get a uh, bit of a bargain with it i'll also pop the links for the microphone if you're filming on a um, iphone as well and you can use this for something even like reels that you might do on insta or of course on here on youtube but i hope you have loved everything like i said make sure you uh smash my little like button and give me uh lots of hearts and likes on there and um that really does help youtube show my videos around if you want to join my patreon also we do give lots of recipes tips and tricks over there as well and we have a free facebook group so go over there and join all the links for everything will be below anyway i will see you next time everyone bye